Hi, I'm Alexander Svet from alexonro.com and today Phase 1 released Capchon 12 with a mass of long-awaited features. The new Capchon 12 brings Lumarange masking, radial gradient, reworked linear gradient and publishing plugins, plus the new interface, Fujifilm film simulations and a number of user experience improvements. Ok, begin downloading Capchon 12, grab something nice to drink and get yourself comfortable. We're heading to inspect Capchon 12's new features in all their detailed glory. Before we proceed to the Capchon 12, I wish to remind you that you can save 10% on Capchon upgrade or a new license. Just enter this code AMBC1 block at the payment page on fate1.com. Let's start with the new interface. Caption developers called the new interface super flat and, yes, can confirm, it's flat. Kind of super if you wish. Most importantly, it feels remarkably good. A bit unusual at first, but things are always changing, you know? The idea behind the new interface is to make Caption easier to use over long editing sessions, and that's a great goal for sure. I have spent dozens of hours in Caption 12 beta, and the new UI felt nice and comfortable. What I really love is that font sizes and cursors have been made larger. It's a thing I have longed for. Another significant update of Capchon 12 interface is the new upper menu system. The menu was completely reorganized. Mac users will be surprised to find edit keyboard shortcuts in the edit tab now. In general, it has become easier to navigate the menu as well as to find a specific option. Plus, developers have added two new sections, layer and select, for a quick access to these features. Okay. Enough about design, let's head to the editing. Did I hear somebody mention a radial gradient here? A radial gradient is a feature which Caption users have been asking for for years. Now the radial gradient is finally here and it's awesome. Radial gradient is really useful when you need to quickly draw a smooth mask and to leave some area untouched. Like here. I have created a radial mask on a model, now I can add some adjustments to the mask or apply one of the new portrait styles. You can control gradient smoothness by moving the internal circle of the radial mask. And if you wish to change the shape of the gradient, just hold the ALT and move one of the anchor points. By default, the radial gradient is filled outside, but you can easily toggle filling by clicking a right mouse button and choosing Draw Mask Inside. The classic linear gradient was significantly reworked in Capchon 12. Now you draw a linear gradient using the new Free Lines tool. By changing the position of lines, you can scale and rotate the gradient. To gain a full control over the new linear gradient, use these simple tricks. To change a gradient smoothness, hold down Shift and move lines. To move lines separately, hold down ALT and move lines. To rotate a gradient by 45 degree angle, hold down SHIFT and rotate the radial gradient. And to relocate a gradient, hold down COMMAND, CONTROL in Windows and drag a mask. When I just started working with the new gradients, I thought, looks awesome, but how do I edit the drawn gradient? What if I wish to erase part of the gradient or to refine the gradient? Don't worry, it's all here, you still can modify gradients as regular masks. The only difference is that in Capchon 12 you firstly need to rasterize the gradient mask. Basically, by rasterizing the gradient you create a regular mask which can be edited and refined. Here I have created a gradient and refined it to fit the image more accurately. 
also I highly recommend you to assign a shortcut for rasterize mask as well as for refine mask, invert mask and, and other basic layer actions. In my work I use styles for Capture One developed by OneStyles.pro. Recently they have released a new set of portrait styles. Portrait styles is a set of 50 color styles designed specifically for portrait editing in Capture One. The styles were adjusted for portrait photography specifics and were tested and approved on hundreds of different portraits. Portrait styles use only three essential tools – curves, advanced color editor and color balance. This gives you the freedom to choose any other tools to help you develop your image further in Caption 1. Plus, all the new styles work in layers, you can change style opacity or apply a style locally. You can download 5 portrait styles for free right here. Another great novelty of Caption 12 is Luma Range Masking. It allows you to create a mask based on selected brightness values. Let's see how it works. Let's say you want to darken windows on this building. To start working with LumaRange masking, you need to draw a mask or just create a new field layer. The point is that LumaRange doesn't create a new mask, but transforms the one which already exists. Now select a new layer and click LumaRange button. This is LumaRange mask settings. Here you set up LumaRange tool to transform your current mask. By moving the sliders you can set the brightness of pixels which will be included in the mask. Top black and white sliders restrict the mask to the specific brightness range. Bottom sliders are responsible for falloff, a useful tool to control mask opacity transitions. You can also correct the accuracy of the mask with radius and sensitivity sliders or invert the selected range by clicking invert range. Here I have masked only highlighted areas and now let's quickly apply some exposure and color balance corrections. Luma Range works perfectly when you need to mask specifically dark or bright areas on your image. Using Luma Range masking, you can easily recover sky in your landscape. Looks great, but let's find some real challenge for Luma Range masking. How about balancing highlighted areas and shadows on this image? First of all, I'm creating a new field layer and applying LumaRange mask to highlighted areas. I think these values would work well here. Also, I'm rasterizing and refining the mask. Now we need a mask for shadows. The easiest way to create it is to copy the first mask to a new layer and invert it. As our masks are ready, time to add some exposure corrections. I am decreasing exposure on highlighted areas. I will add contrast here as well. For shadows, I am going to raise exposure, contrast and shadow sliders plus a bit of levels correction. Looks great, but this is what you get if you add some extra editing. Fantastic result, just fantastic. And you know what? That's not all the features of LumaRange. There is a thing which just blew my mind when I realized it. LumaRange reinvents levels correction. Yes, just answer me. What is the biggest issue with levels correction? Right, you have to be really careful with levels, otherwise we will lose data. Like this image. I have applied a strong levels correction, everything looks good, but I have lost lots of information in shadows. Now check this out. The only thing you need to do is to apply levels to a field layer and remove dark areas from LumaRange. 
This way, Luma Range automatically restricts Level 2 from affecting Deep Shadows. Now we have got a perfectly balanced image with a great color and detailed shadows. Ok, Capture on 12, now I am really impressed. By the way, don't forget to upgrade your file engine in base characteristics, otherwise you would not be able to use all the features of Capture on 12. If you are not really familiar with tools I'm using in this video and you wish to learn more about Capture One, I have great news for you. I have published a free guide to Capture One where you will learn everything you need to begin working in Capture One without a mass of overwhelming information. Step by step, you will discover all the main features starting from image importing and archive management to essential editing and exporting. And the best thing is that it's totally free. Just go to alexandra.com and click Free Guide to Capture One. Now let's continue with Capture One 12 features. The next big thing in Capture One 12 is the new plugin platform. Capture One 12 offers publishing plugins, which allow you to publish your images to different services right from Capture One. To use publishing plugins, you need to right click on an image choose Publish and select Get Plugins. You will be redirected to a page at phase1.com where you will find all the available plugins. Also, you can download Capture One SDK and start creating your own plugins. Ok, let's move on to some great news for Fuji camera owners. Yes, in Capture One 12 you can now apply the famous Fujifilm film simulations. To apply Fujifilm film simulations, you need to go to the Base Characteristics tool and change Base Curve. Here you will find the classical film simulations. At the moment, film simulations are available only for some Fujifilm cameras. As expected, you can't use film simulations with non-Fuji RAWs, even if you would assign Fuji camera profile. Another important specific of Capture One Engine is that Base Characteristics tool doesn't support layers. So, there is no way to apply film simulations locally as well. At the same time, such an approach has a significant advantage over styles or presets. Base Curve is not an adjustment. It doesn't use any tools in Capture One. That's why you have a complete freedom of editing your images. Fujifilm film simulations are available in all the versions of Capture One, including Fujifilm Express, Fujifilm Pro, and a regular Pro. If you are not familiar with Capture One Fujifilm, I have prepared for you a detailed guide where you will find all the information on this special offer for Fujifilm photographers. Besides major new features, Capture One offers several small but really useful improvements. Here I wish to mention two of them. First of all, copy and apply adjustments can now ignore cropping. Previously, cropping and other composition settings were automatically copied during batch editing. That was a real headache. In Capture One 12, you can set a custom preference for this. Just go to Adjustments clipboard, click Free dot icon and choose Auto Select Adjusted Accept Composition. The second significant improvement is the new keyboard shortcut manager. Capture One allows you to customize almost all the shortcuts and I highly recommend you to do so. In Capture One 12, developers have reworked the keyboard shortcut manager and added a search bar for fast navigation in the hotkey list. Plus, Capture One 12 brings long-awaited support for some new cameras. All the new features make Capture One 12 one of the user-friendliest upgrades of Capture One ever. Developers implemented lots of long-awaited features for loyal Capture One users and reworked some classical tools to make them more understandable for the new to Capture One photographers. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. 
I'm preparing lots of new CAPTCHA on tutorials for you.